Well, thank you so much for joining us. Let's get you updated here on our grain trade right now. We'll start with the corn market. And remember, we sold more corn overnight to Mexico. It was 120,000 tons that was uh, shipped for the current marketing year. Corn did rebound after that news. Don't know if it's really related all that much to that sale announcement, but it didn't hurt. December corn now two and three quarters higher at 374, make it 374 and a half. Uh, that would now be three higher. It's come off of its earlier high from a little bit ago by about a penny and a quarter. Uh, let's take a look at our soybean market. And right now you have November 14 and three quarters higher at 897 and three quarters. It has almost breached that uh, $9 benchmark again. And we have January up 14 cents at 9.11 and a half. Meanwhile, in the wheat market in uh, Chicago, we have the December contract now a penny lower at 4.86 and a quarter. There a little bit ago, it was a penny higher. In the Kansas City market this morning, December is currently down about two cents. We're at 4.05 and a half per bushel right now. Minneapolis wheat had surged ahead there for a while. It was up uh, oh, about nine cents or so. Right now, we're up about seven and a quarter at 5.54 and a quarter. So uh, strong movement again in that spring wheat market this morning, as reflected by the Minneapolis trade. I want to welcome to the show Brian Hoops. He's with Midwest Market Solutions. He's in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, Brian, lots of stuff uh, pulling and tugging on the grain markets here this morning, not the least of which is the quarterly stocks report coming out here in a little bit. Uh, that would be a little over an hour from right now. And we have the end of the month, the end of the quarter. We have all kinds of stuff going on. Weather, too. What do you think here? Yeah, a lot of uh, moving pieces today. It's going to be interesting by the closing bell. We are seeing a little strength in the grain markets, particularly that soybean market. Weather forecasts are going to suggest some harvesting delays and uh, maybe some concerns about yield and quality issues going to develop as well. But that's the upside leader here this morning. And if it wasn't for the quarterly stocks numbers, I think, you know, beans may find a little bit more strength. So we're probably going to see some uh, some long position selling, maybe some profit taking on those longs ahead of that report, just in case that report is a, somewhat of a bearish tone. Now, do you have access to the latest commitment of traders report that came out Friday afternoon as far as how it relates to the grain? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we've commented that in our uh, weekly newsletter that this uh, soybean trade has actually turned somewhat bearish. Uh, and the, com the commercials were pretty big sellers this last week. And, um, you know, they're still holding slight net longs, but th they've really cut some of their long positions back to the lowest levels they had since last July. So even though prices really haven't uh, seen much of a rally like they did last June and July, the commercials are starting to sell into the small rally that we have already had. Is that normal for this time of year? Uh, not necessarily. You know, a lot of times uh, this time of year, they're they're trying to be buyers as we go into the harvest time frame. The funds are usually selling uh, and the commercials are, are accumulating, accumulating net long positions, but that's not the case this year. Uh, a lot of times the funds will step in and buy in the fourth quarter of the market. And it looks like, you know, that may be kind of a role reversal, so to speak, compared to normal years. Okay, we'll come back and take another look at our cattle and hog markets here as we get closer to the midday. We're talking with Brian Hoops, and we'll be back after these messages. Let's go to the live cattle and see what that market is doing here this morning on the futures in Chicago. We currently have December live cattle, 53 lower. We're at 110.05 per hundredweight, and February down 30 cents. Moving on to our feeder cattle trade. Right now in the feeders, you currently have the October down a buck 75, November down a buck and a quarter at 141.72. That's about a dollar and a half off our earlier high of the day, uh, getting fairly close to the low, uh, down within about 35 cents of our low of the day. Meanwhile, lean hog markets, uh, we have the nearby October down a dollar, but all the others have now turned higher in December, now 88 higher at 70.72. That's over $3 off its earlier low this morning and about 30 cents from our high of the day. Let's go back to Brian Hoops. Uh, quick thought on this livestock trade here with a big reversal already this morning on the lean hogs. Yeah, so far it's been a pretty erratic day in the hog market. You know, pretty bearish report, but I think a lot of that was already dialed in and factored in, and now we're seeing a little uh, buying interest coming into this hog market. Meanwhile, the cattle have been on nothing but a rally in the early part of uh, the month of September. Now, as we close this month out, we may see some profit-taking, some liquidation, some sort of a pullback here would certainly be in order. And this has been pretty quiet trade so far, but uh, as we get in closer to the closing bell, things could get a little bit more exciting. 
You talked earlier about the um, commitment of traders' numbers on the grain side. How about on livestock? But yeah, you look at the livestock market, and, and we've seen the, uh, the commercials be pretty aggressive buyers uh, in this cattle market all the entire way down. Ever since we topped in April, they've been accumulating some long positions, and now that's starting to pay off uh, for them as prices move higher. it has been a similar pattern in the hogs. We topped in the month of April, worked our way lower here recently. At the same time, the commercials have been pretty aggressive buyers and uh, that should pay off for them if we can see higher prices into the fourth quarter of this year. All right. Well, thank you for all the information and uh, good to visit with you again, Brian. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. He is based in Springfield, Missouri. Quick look, if I could, at our energy markets and get you updated here on the West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil Trade today. Uh, we are currently showing a little bit lower market action here. So currently you have it trading 45 cents lower. We're at 55.46 per barrel on that November contract. And John just wanted to point out on the other side, you have the Dow Jones Industrial Average now trading about 98 points higher as of right now today. Okay. Thank you very much for the update, Marlon. Mm -hmm.